Since 1996, the super tall Petronas Twin Towers dominated Kuala Lumpur's skyline. Standing at 451.9 meters, the incredible Twin Towers fascinated the masses and movie makers who made them the core of some great films, such as Entrapment, starring the legendary Sean Connery. However, as of November 2022, the story changed as a new colossal and immensely high new tower, dubbed the Merdeka 118, soared over 678.9 meters high above Malaysia's capital. This new, quite intriguing $1.5 billion engineering marvel mega-tall tower is, as you have probably already guessed from its height, a record breaker and officially the tallest in Southeast Asia and the second highest in the world after Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And once again, beautiful and advanced Malaysia has proven with another engineering wonder that it is a world-class state capable of anything. Why did Malaysia build the Merdeka 118? What are its features? Will it be fully occupied by the end of 2024? And what are the engineering methods used to build this colossal, diamond-like, one-of-a-kind masterpiece? So why did they build it? The answer is national pride, the commemoration of independence, and a show of economic strength and resilience. Kuala Lumpur is perhaps one of the most beautiful cities in the world and is one of the most important financial hubs in Asia and the world. Its neat and majestic skyline is a reminder that Malaysia was, and still is, a regional economic power. The project also created thousands of jobs and served the city's economy quite well while offering national, regional, and international corporations new office space in a superior and green, record-breaking skyscraper. It also gives the nations a sense of pride since the Merdeka 118 design is based on the silhouette of Tunku Abdul Rahman, raising his hand while chanting Merdeka on August 31, 1957, the official independence of Malaysia. The building was designed by the notorious Australian firm Fender Katsalidis Architects who are behind the two tallest buildings in Melbourne, the 297-meter Eureka Tower and the 317-meter Australia 108. The tower was originally known as Warasan Merdeka Tower, KL-118 and PNB-118. The word Merdeka is a term in Bahasa Malaysia that means free and independent. The development on Merdeka 118 began in 2016 on a site that looks over Stadium Merdeka in a well-preserved historical neighborhood. This made the preservation of the neighborhood's integrity during construction an important issue. To minimize settlement and lateral movement, a circular-shaped cofferdam wall was designed as an embedded retaining system for excavation, eliminating the need for additional support structures such as struts or ground anchors. With the last of 18,000 glass panels installed in November 2022, the Merdeka 118's crystalline facade shined like a diamond. The building is not just another super tall skyscraper. It is a triple platinum lead, green real estate, and a green building index rated green building. These ratings mean that corporations can reduce their scope to emissions which are the indirect emissions from the generation of energy that has been purchased from a utility provider. It is simply a very sophisticated superstructure building with 118 floors, including five underground basements. It consists of 83 floors of office space, 17 floors of luxury hotel managed by the Hyatt Group, a mall, an observation deck, and a spire. As of January 2023, it overtook the Shanghai Tower, which was created by Gensler in China as the second tallest skyscraper in the world. The building interior was also designed to spell luxury with a unique layout for accommodating predetermined mixed-used features, and of course, it is also designed as a new tourist attraction. Its main features include 288,000 square meters of floor space, 158,000 square meters of top-grade office spaces distributed over 83 floors from level 8 to level 96. 14 floors solely dedicated to Hyatt Hotel, which will be the first in Malaysia. The hotel includes 252 hotel guest rooms from levels 98 to 112, where their Mark Hall restaurant will be located. The hotel will open in September 2023. 
a seven-story mall called the 118 Mall, which will open in 2024. Six levels of underground parking with a capacity of 8,100 parking spaces. An observation deck dubbed the View at 118, which is a mezzanine floor within levels 115 and 116. And of course, it will be the highest observation deck in Southeast Asia and reachable through a dedicated elevator that takes a little over a minute to reach the 115th floor. It will offer an unrivaled 360-degree view of Kuala Lumpur's urban landscape. 87 top-notch fast and comfortable elevators. A 40-story spire illuminated by 865 LED lights and equipped with a staircase for the brave at heart. 100% rainwater harvesting system to water the outdoor greenery within the environs. A direct connection to a new and dedicated metro station. Access to two monorail stations at Maharaja Leela and Hong Tua. All of this leads us to the most important question. How did they do it? And what are the engineering marvels utilized to make such an amazing structure possible and able to withstand powerful typhoons and earthquakes? Needless to say, such a massive and majestic tall structure required special high-performance concrete, HPC, and structural stiffness in addition to innovative engineering solutions to ensure its structural integrity and stability. These special needs led to intensive collaboration between Arup and Samsung c and Engineering and Construction Group to develop a unique high-performance concrete for the tower core and mega-column elements. This concrete has record-breaking pumpability that enhanced the tower's constructability and saved thousands of tons of structural steel, reducing both the environmental impact and cost. The tower's structural stiffness was achieved through the use of bow grid reinforcement technologies in the most congested column sections of the core wall at the lower levels of the structure. The structure features three sets of three-story deep outrigger structures maximizing usable premium space while providing high resistance to wind loads. The specially designed concrete also has a high modulus of elasticity to better resist lateral wind loads, high slump flow for great workability, high strength, and minimal heat of hydration. Coupling this HPC with three sets of three-story deep outrigger structures resulted in stiffness with high resistance to wind loads. The columns and core walls size was minimized to maximize usable premium space. The tower structural system comprises eight mega columns, central core walls, intermediate columns, three sets of single story belt trusses, three sets of triple story belt trusses, and three sets of triple story outriggers. The slender spiral which rises 160 meters above the main structure was designed with flexibility in mind since it is subjected to constant vibration due to wind load. To minimize the vibration, the builder adapted 3D space truss framing and its wind load distribution has been ascertained by state-of-the-art aeroelastic wind tunnel testing. The external steel frame system, the outrigger, and the belt truss of this impressive mega high-rise are built with steel and include 6,000 tons of heavy structural sections weighing up to 1,202 kilograms per cubic meter from which are 4,000 tons of very high quality High Star 460 and S460M steel. This resulted in weight savings of 20% for the steel structure, which could not have been accomplished if regular steel grades had been used. This leads us to the final question. Will Merdeka 118, the second tallest tower in the world, be fully occupied by the end of 2024? According to KGV International Property Consultants, among many other renowned property firms, the Merdeka 118 is an iconic building that is government-owned and the relevant parties will make sure it is fully occupied. Malayan Bank Berhad Maybank, which is Malaysia's largest banking group, has announced that it will be relocating its corporate headquarters in the first quarter of 2025. This organization alone will take 33 floors. PNB has also relocated to the building, and according to various sources, there is no shortage of clients who have already leased or intend to lease office and retail space in this stunning building. Have you been to Kuala Lumpur recently? 
Did you check out this new skyscraper? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon.